Hi there, Mr. Sutton here with the AB Calculus 613 Extra Practice Number 4 Solutions on Volumes of Solids of Revolution. For this one, I want to find the volume of the solid revolution when the area between these curves is spun around the x-axis. So let me graph these out on my grapher. I'll start by putting this y function here in my y1. And I know this is going to be a, a semicircle with a radius of 3, so let me just do zoom 4 to get a, a general picture of what's going on there. And it's a little bit more difficult to graph these vertical lines. You don't really need to, but if you wanted to, you could quit out of here. And I'm going to do the, uh, the draw menu. So that's going to be second program, which brings you to the draw menu. For vertical lines, you do option 4, and then you just enter the x value where you want to draw one. So we got a vertical line at negative 2. There it is. And then quit out of there. And let me just yank the input from before. And let me just make another vertical line at positive 2. There we go. OK. So what do we do with this? Well, we need limits of integration for the uh, integral we're about to use to find the uh, solid of revolution here. So that's going to be just the negative 2 and 2, because it, it's just this region in here now, since we're revolving this around the x-axis, that means our bounded region is flush against the axis of revolution. There's no gaps or spaces. So that means we can use disks, areas of circles, basically, for our area formula that we're integrating across this whole integral. So I'm going to write a of x equals a pi r squared. And the radius in this case, this is just the distance from the axis of revolution to the outer edge of our bounded region. So from the x-axis to uh, this curve up here, which is basically just this 9 minus x squared square root function. So we're going to plug that in for r. And I'm just going to do this on the calculator now. Um, in general, I'm going to be taking the integral from negative 2 to 2 to get my volume of this a of x that I just wrote. Don't forget the dx in there. And let's see what the calculator has to say about all this. So to actually enter what I've done in there, I'm going to do math 9 to get my integral. And let's see here. I'm going to do negative 2 to positive 2 for my limits of integration. Inside here, I've got a of x, which is this thing. So that's going to be, let's see, pi times uh, basically this y function squared. Now remember, I stored this whole thing as y1. So I'm just going to do alpha trace and pull up y1 from that menu. And then I'm just going to square that because it was pi r squared. There we go. Put a dx out there. And press enter. We get 96.342. For this one, we're trying to find the volume of the solid that we get when we revolve the area between these curves around the x-axis. So let me take a moment to graph these out because this is a calculator problem. So I've entered f of x as my y1 and g of x as my y2. In terms of the window, I'm not really sure where to go. Um, let me just do zoom 6. That usually covers everything. OK, so there we go. We have basically this region in here that we're trying to revolve around the x-axis. So in order to do that, and I just zoomed in a little bit there, uh, in order to do that, I need limits of integration. So clearly, we're, we're starting at 0 because they told us we have the vertical line. x equals 0 is one of our boundaries. But how about this intersection up here? Well, it looks like 4 for the x value there. Is it 4? So you could uh, basically find where f of x and g of x intersect, where they equal each other on your calculator. But let me just plug in 4 and see if that's actually the number. So let's see. We have the square root of 4, which is 2, plus 3 is 5. And then over here, if I plug in 4, 4 plus 1 is 5. So yeah, yeah, they do intersect at 4. OK. So I'm going to have my volume being the integral from 0 to 4 of some kind of area function. So we need the area slices of, of you know what we're revolving around here, the, the cross sections of this solid of revolution. So because I have this big space between the bounded region and the axis of revolution, I'm going to have to use washers or donuts, as I like to call them, for my area formula. 
So I've got a of x equals pi times big R squared minus little r squared. Basically a big circle minus a little circle. Big R, that's going to be the distance from the axis of revolution to the further away bounded boundary of the region. So that's going to be this uh, f of x square root function that I'm squaring for that first piece there. And little r is the distance from axis of revolution to the closer function, which is this uh, linear g of x function. So we have minus g of x squared. At this point, my volume is going to be integral from 0 to 4 of a of x dx. And I'm going to do the rest of this on the calculator. So there's a lot of ways to enter this on the calculator. I'm just going to actually uh, create another function in y3 in my y equals to represent this a of x function. And then I'll just take the integral of y3 just so I'm not cluttering up the screen with things. So y3 here, that's going to be pi times, now to do uh, f of x squared, well, let me get a parentheses first. There we go. Uh, to do f of x squared, f of x was just y1, as you can see up here. So I'm just going to do alpha trace y1 and then square that. And then to subtract g squared, I just have to subtract uh, alpha trace y2 squared. Close my parentheses. And now y3 is going to be my a of x function. Quitting out of there then, I'm just going to do math 9 for my integral. Going from 0 to 4, alpha trace y3, and put an x in the dx box, press enter. And all of this is going to come out to approximately, drum roll please, 108.909. For this calculator-based free response problem, we're given the f and g functions here. Uh, f is some kind of uh, trig function, g is an exponential function, and r is this shaded region, and so is s, uh, between these two functions in the first quadrant. Based off of all of this, we want to find, for our first task anyway, the area of region r. Okay, so in order to do this, I just need to do basically integral from left to right of top function minus bottom function. So I need to find my, my basically my intersection point right here. Let me start then by setting f of x and g of x equal to each other and figuring out where they intersect on my graphing calculator. In order to figure out where these intersect, even though they already gave me a graph of this thing, I'm gonna have to graph it out myself. So I've entered f of x as my y1, g of x is my y2, and I'm not really sure about the window because they didn't give me any kind of grid lines or scale here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do zoom 6. And let's see what we get. Okay, so there's my sine function. And there's my uh, exponential function. So it, it turns out that this area here is actually very small when you look at it from just 10 in every direction. Um, so let me zoom in quite a bit. Let me make my window, let's see here. Well, probably don't need anything before the, x, the, the y axis. So let's just go from 0 all the way to, I don't know, 2. Can't be more than 2. Let's do zoom fit, zoom 0, and give this another shot. All right, so there's my f of x function. And there's my exponential function. And these two spots right here, these are what we're seeing in the picture now. So I want to find this intersection for part A. And, you know, while I'm at it, I think I'll find this other intersection too. Since it's in the picture and we have this S region that they haven't asked about yet, I've got a feeling I'm going to need to know this other intersection point as well. All right, so uh, let me do this first intersection point. We'll do second trace, option five for intersect. Let's move my spider back this way. We'll just go from left to right here. And let me press enter one, two, three times. So that happens at about 0 0.1782. And I'm going to give that one a name. I'm going to call that A. So now I can refer to this decimal as A here ever after. I don't feel like rewriting it every single time I want to use it. And on the calculator, I'm also going to store that value I just got so I'm going to press the store button, and I'm going to store that as alpha A. 
So now I don't need to rewrite it on the calculator either. I can just use A. Okay, let me go back and find, let's do second trace, option five intersect. I want to find that other intersection point. I don't need it for this problem, but I'm going to need it later, I feel like. So enter, 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 and that's an intersection of one. Well, that's very tidy compared to this decimal that we got there. So we've found all the intersection points that we're going to need for this problem. Now for part A in particular, we just need the integral from, let's see, 0 to A of, well, we have to do top minus bottom if we want to avoid getting negative area. Or I guess we could just put whatever we put in here inside an absolute value and not even worry about it. But that seems like wussing out. Uh, so let me do, the top function here is g. So we're going to do g of x minus f of x to get this positive area. And that's going to have a dx to go along with it. Let me do that on the calculator now. So plugging things in, I'm going to do math 9 for integral. We're going from 0 to alpha a. And in here, I've got g of x minus f of x. So that's going to be alpha trace y2, because that's where I put g of x, minus alpha trace y1, that was f of x. Put an x in the dx box, press enter. And that comes out to 0 0.065. For this part of the problem, I just have to find the area of S. Now, we already found the area of R in part A. Finding the area of S is pretty similar. We're just doing an integral from left to right of a top minus bottom function. So my limits of integration in this case, I already found this intersection back in part A. And I, I actually called the intersection A. It was some crazy looking decimal. Um, and then we found this other intersection while I was at it. I already found that that was 1. So we're going to have now the integral then, this is the area of S, is going to be the integral from A to 1 of, and now we have top function minus bottom function. So I can just write f of x minus g of x dx. And I can do the rest on the calculator. So here we go. Let me do math 9 to get my integral. We're doing alpha A, because that's where I stored that intersection decimal, which I'm not going to bother showing you again. And that was going to 1. We have alpha trace y1 to get f of x. And I stored g of x in y2, so alpha trace y2, dx. And that gives us an area of about 0.410. For the last part of this problem, they want the volume of the solid generated when S, this region right here, is revolved around the horizontal line y equals negative 1. I'm just going to draw a horizontal line down here just to get a good visual of what's going on. Not drawn to scale, but it's somewhere below the uh, x-axis there. Now our limits of integration on this one are just going to be the limits of this bounded region. So we're just going from A to 1, just like we did when we found the area of S. But I'm not finding the area anymore. I'm taking um, an area formula and integrating it from A to 1. So I'm going to need to find out what that area formula entails. For the area, I'm going to have to, since I've got this gap between the area of S here, this bounded area, and my axis of revolution, I'm going to have to use washers, the washer formula for this. So that's going to be A of X equals pi times big R squared minus little r squared. Now, big R is going to be the distance between my axis of revolution and the further away part of the boundary. So that's uh, f of x minus negative 1. That's going to give me that big radius. So I've got a pi outside. And minus negative 1, I can write plus 1 instead. And I'm squaring that. So that whole thing, f of x plus 1, that distance is big R. Now, little r is this inner distance between the closer part of the boundary and the axis of revolution. So that's going to be g of x minus negative 1, or g of x plus 1. And that's being squared inside there. Let me put all of this in my calculator now. Although, actually, before I do that, let me uh, write what I'm about to put into my calculator. Uh, we need an integral. We need to integrate this area. So we have the integral from, let's see here, that was going to be yeah, a to 1, because we're just using the boundaries of s. And that's going to be the integral of a of x dx. So now let me put this in my calculator. So this is a little bit of a mess to enter. Um, to make things a little bit easier, 
when I enter this, this a of x in here, I can actually take this pi outside the integral. So let me just write the pi outside there so I don't have to put everything in a huge parentheses inside. And now I'm going to do math 9 for my integral. I've got alpha a is my lower limit, 1 is my upper limit. And inside now I just have basically uh, big R squared minus little r squared. So I'm going to need a parentheses for the big R. That's going to be f of x, which was alpha trace y1. We've got a plus 1 there. Close the parentheses, square it. Now we have to subtract little r squared. So this is going to be alpha trace y2, because that's the g function, plus 1. Close the parentheses, square it. Don't forget to go over and actually put an x in your dx box. And then press enter, hope for the best. We get about 4.559. For this calculator-based free response problem, we're given the f and g functions, which are just e to the x and ln of x. Not too bad. Based off of that, our first task is to find the area of the region enclosed by these two graphs, along with the vertical lines x equals 1 half and x equals 1. So let me start by graphing all of this out. I'll start by putting my f function, e to the x, in y1, and I'll use uh, y2 for g of x. Not really sure on the window for these, so let me just do zoom 4. I don't think these are going to be too far apart from each other. So there's e to the x. Here's ln of x. And there isn't a whole lot of uh, boundary, bounded regions going on at this point, but we still have the vertical lines to throw in there. So let me quit out of there. And to do vertical lines, I'm going to do, let's see here, second program brings up my draw menu. Option 4 gives me vertical lines, and I just write the x value here. So we're going to have 1 half. So there's that vertical line. And then let me quit out of there. And let me just yank my input from before. And now I want to do a vertical line at x equals 1. There we go. So here's a picture of what I just drew. We've got this bounded region in here that we're trying to find the area of. Uh, in general, we're going to use basically the integral of left to right of top function minus bottom function. So I'm going to have the integral from 1 half to 1. Those are the x values bounding this. And top minus bottom, in this case, is going to be e to the x minus ln of x, or uh, f of x minus g of x, dx in this case. And I can just do the rest of that on the calculator now. So to do this, let me do math 9 to get my integral. And I've got, let's see, 1 half is the lower limit. 1 was the upper limit. Inside, to do f minus g, I need to do alpha trace y1 minus alpha trace y2, because that's where I stored the f and the g functions. Don't forget to put the x in that box over there. Press Enter. And our area is 1.223. On this one, we want to find the volume of the solid generated when the region enclosed by the graphs of f, g, between a 1 half and 1 for the x values, is revolved around the line y equals 4. Okay, well, let me go back to my graphing calculator, and let me just clear this out, go to y1, and let me just draw in the uh, line y equals 4, why not? And let me also set my window, just so I can get a really good look at this. I'll make my x min 1 half and my x max 1. And let me just do zoom fit, zoom 0, so we can see everything together all at once. So there's the f function, e to the x. Here's the g function, ln of x. And here, coming across the top of the screen, is y equals 4. So I'm taking this area in here and revolving it around this horizontal line up there. OK, so uh, I'm going to use the Limits of integration I did for the area before, I'm going to use 1 half and 1 is my limits of integration. But this time, I'm going to be integrating an area across that interval. And the area, since I have this gap between my bounded region and the axis of revolution, I'm going to have to use the washer formula for this. So donuts, basically. One big circle minus another. So we have uh, a of x equals pi times big R squared minus little r squared. Big R squared is the distance from this further away part of the bounded region to the axis of revolution. So to get that distance, I have to do 4, 
minus the g function. And I have to square that, of course. And then let's see here. I need to do little r. That's the distance between my horizontal line and the closer function, the closer part of the bounded region. Um, so that's going to be 4 minus the f function and squaring that. And let's do all of that on the calculator now. Although, actually, before we do that, let's, let's get the, uh, the general integral setup of uh, what we're about to do. Um, so I need to take the integral from 1 half to 1, this is to get the volume now, of a of x dx. So now let's do it all. To enter all of this craziness now on the calculator, here's what I did. Uh, first, I was a little bit sneaky. I know that if I just have a constant multiplier, I can take that outside the integral. So this pi, I'm actually going to write that outside my integral. And now I'm going to multiply that by math 9 integral from 1 half to 1 of, and this is still going to be a little bit tricky, I'm going to need uh, two squared parentheses in here. So opening my first parentheses, I'm going to do 4 minus the g function right here. Um, so that's going to be minus alpha trace y2, because that's where I stored g. I've got to close that parentheses and square it. So that's big R squared minus, now I need to do little r squared. Open another parentheses. We've got 4 minus the f function, which is going to be alpha trace y1. Close that, square it. So that takes care of my integrand. I still have to put the x in the differential. And now press Enter. And all that comes out to 23.609. For this last part of the problem, this was a little bit of a curveball because you've been doing the area volume dance. And this part really has nothing to do with area and volume. We're defining another function, h of x, as f of x minus g of x. They just want the absolute min and max values of h of x on the interval from 1 half to 1. OK. Well, for one thing, we know we can actually find them because we have a closed interval. And the functions that they gave us, e to the x and uh, ln of x, they're both continuous, at least on this interval. ln of x has some issues, but they don't happen until you get back to 0 and negative numbers. Um, so that also is continuous here. So we're guaranteed there's a min and a max. We just need to find it. So to get that, we're going to use the candidates test. Since we're doing the, both the min and the max, candidates test is absolutely the way to go on this one, because we're going to need to see all the output values to pick the highest and lowest. So I'm definitely going to be testing out 1 half and 1 in the h function to see what that gives us. We also need to test out any critical values between 1 half and 1. So let me find those critical values now. That's going to be a result. We're going to need to do that by finding h prime and solving where that equals 0. So h prime, that's going to be e to the x minus 1 over x, just taking the derivative of these functions individually. We want to see where this equals 0. We already know that this is undefined at 0. Uh, and that's a possible critical value because anywhere that h prime is undefined is going to be a critical value. However, 0 is outside the interval from 1 half to 1. So we're not going to worry about it. So let's go on the graph for now and, and see where this happens. So I'm back in my y equals. And I'm going to clear out this 4 that I had earlier on. And I'm going to put the h function now. Uh, actually, I'm going to put, yeah, I'm going to put both the h and the h prime function in here. So let me start with the h function. That's just going to be alpha trace y1 minus alpha trace y2, f minus g. And now for h prime, I have to actually put that in there the old-fashioned way. Um, so we have e to the x minus, and I'll do, let's see, Francie fraction here, 1 over x. There we go. Now, I only want to see where this h prime equals 0. So I'm actually going to deselect everything else here. I still need everything else. But I'm going to deselect it. I'm just going to graph this piece. And for my window, I'm going to go from 0.5 to 1. So I actually already have that loaded in there from an earlier part of the problem. So let me do zoom 0, zoom fit. And let's see where h prime is crossing the x-axis. So there's only one crossing right here. That's fine with me. Let me do second trace, zeros. And let me go a little bit to the left of that crossing. And somewhere back there, press Enter. 
Uh, move to the right of it, press enter again, enter one more time. So we've got about 0 0.5671. Now I'm going to store this as a special value. I'm going to call this value here A, just so I don't have to keep writing it over and over again. And I'm actually going to go on my calculator and save that value. So let me quit out of here. And I'm going to press the store button, storing that last x value I just found as alpha A. All right, now I don't have to worry about losing that. At this point, it's time for the candidates test. This was our only critical value between 1 half and 1. So we're going to test this out along with 1 half and 1 in the h function. So back on my calculator, I'm now going to do h of 1 half. So let me do alpha trace and pull up y3. That's where I stored just the regular h function. And we're going to plug 1 half into that. There we go. That comes out to about 2.342. Now let me plug A in. So I'm going to yank my input from before. And I'm going to delete all the rest of that out. Um, but I'm going to put in alpha A for the H function. Comes out to about 2.330, so pretty close. We're going to have to look closely after all these are done. And then we have to plug 1 in as well. So I yank my input from before, put 1 in there instead of A. Enter 2.718. OK. So here are all the candidates. Let's find the min first. So we have a 2.342. 2.330 is a little bit lower than that. And we don't get any lower than that. So that's the absolute min. The absolute max out of these three is going to be 2.718. So there we are.